last week when we took took our shall we say dip we dipped our big toe into the pool of of gb news and like i say things aren't going well over gb news especially when they've got less viewer ratings than the welsh version of paw patrol but again that's another story um one of the things that they were so excited about was the fact that britain be could become a new tech nation and enable itself to invest heavily in r d and become the leaders in tech but of course Again, this is part of the, shall we say, recent efforts of Brexiteers and especially the Conservative Brexiteers to rewrite history. Because you may remember when, they, when the, the Conservatives first got in, in the coalition government, they pushed heavily for austerity. And this then meant them slashing the UK's R&D budget. And as a result, what happened was that science... R&D's places, universities, had to rely more on EU research grants. And because of that, and because the UK and the Conservatives, like I say, this idea that it is going to, quote, level up the country is once again pointless nonsense, because if they were actually serious about this, we would see some sort of policy document outlining uh, how this is going to work. And of course, there is no such document again not a surprise instead you get them another attempt to obviously rewrite history is of course the recent education report saying that oh um white working class people are being let down because they're being taught about white privilege again not happening at all it is because the tories took such drastic cuts to education they could almost be framed as direct systematically targeted abuse against the working class in this country but there you go um and like i say their attempts to rewrite history are absolutely fanciful and laughable completely laughable so let's get into the truth of the as we've discovered just today that uk science has lost access to over 1.5 billion pounds in the last five years and that is down to brexit so as always before we do jump into the article please do hit that like share and subscribe button like i say that does help out the channel massively and of course there is a link down below to my patreon page and of course the one off donation link called buy me coffee where you can well buy me coffee and as always thank you very much to all those people who do support me that way and now on with the article so this comes from the yorkshire bylines the title is brexit and the uk science the 1.5 billion lost over the last five years. Horizon 2020 was the biggest EU research and innovation program ever, with nearly 80 billion euros of funding available, available over seven years, of, from 2014 to 2020. In addition to also private investment that this money attracted, it promised more breakthroughs, discoveries, and world firsts by taking great ideas from the lab to the market. Horizon 2020 was an inclusive scheme set up to both public and private sectors to help businesses drive economic growth, create jobs, and the overall goal was to ensure that Europe produced world-class products and services. But new analysis from the Scientists for EU campaign shows that from the time the UK voted to leave the EU in 2016 to the end of the grant period in December of 2020, the, the number of Horizon 2020 programmes won by the UK steadily plummeted. Before the Brexit vote, the UK had been constantly neck and neck with Germany on both uh, participation, uh, participation counts and total grant amounts. If the UK had not left the EU, scientists for EU estimate that we would have kept pace with Germany, winning over 1.46 billion pounds more in grants over that same period. Without Brexit, it is estimated that the UK would have won over 2,000 more products and participations. Such products would have offered career development and opportunities for UK scientists, leading to future breakthroughs, innovations, world firsts in all fields of science and technology. Dr. Mike Galsworthy, Director for Scientists for EU, said, uh, said this of these developments. 
Looking ahead, UK science will want to regain quickly its leading role on the European science programme. Brexit uncertainty over the last five years has knocked the UK position down several rungs and with a huge hole in our funds and networks. The Prime Minister is promising that Brexit will regain, uh, that Britain will regain its status as a global science superpower. But what's his plan to regain our status as a European science superpower? We need a plan to build back, back, back better in Europe after Brexit, and this cannot be something the government can just ignore. Other prominent scientists have also voiced their outrage at these developments since the UK voted to leave the EU. Professor Dave Ann Glover, who, Dave Ann Glover, who was the first chief scientific advisor to the president of the European Commission and the first chief scientist advisor for Scotland, highlights how much hard it will be to undertake research with our scientists are unable to collaborate with colleagues from all over the continent. She has stressed the urgent need in new positive uh, incentives to stop the decline, such as the Salter uh, Research Awards, recently launched by the Royal Society of Edinburgh. Uh, commenting on this initiative, she said... This incentive is the kind of bounce back and re-engagement that we need, not just in Scotland, but everywhere. Boris Johnson talks of the UK being a science superpower, but this will only be achieved by the appreciation that he has a huge amount of recent vandalism to undo onto the way back to be such an international position. And when it came to the referendum vote, the scientific community was overwhelming, overwhelmingly opposed to leaving the EU. Professor Martin McKee, uh, the Professor of the European Public Health and London School for Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, says that it is now clear these concerns were justified, and he maintains that this is a lose-lose situation. UK-based scientists have made a huge contribution to, to European projects, but the next generation of British researchers could suffer very badly because of the chaos of the last five years. And unless the government restores our leading position in the world's leading multinational scientific community, we will be missing out the vital experience in collaborative projects and a cutting edge of science. The, the, so the Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been leading the government's praise of all things science and scientific. He hopes the rapid development of the COVID vaccine uh, and the UK's science role in their development though they were collaborations with EU partners, has put the science sector at the heart of the UK government economic development. Johnson also wrote recently this, that this is the moment to learn this start lesson of the pandemic. Our daily dependence on high quality scientific research it is also the moment to abandon any notion that the government can be strategically indifferent or treat research as a matter of abstract ac academic speculation. He added, if the COVID experience has taught us anything, this government does not have a role in making demands, in explicitly framing the challenges that we hope that science can meet. The Horizon 2020 programme is now complete and is about to be replaced by the new Horizon Europe. The government faces a very uphill challenge in, sell in, in selling the UK as a reliable and stable partner in future European science and technology research programmes. The big question is, is can the UK get back to its former position as a lead player on the multinational research programmes? UK and UK science are now very much holding their collective breath to wait to see for that answer. And I don't think it's going to happen. I've said before, this government in particular... This, this specific government is in no way, no way at all, in any mood to reopen negotiations with Europe, especially this year. And if you look at the recent, well, the debacle that was the uh, Norway deal, uh, it very cleanly said that this government was not interested in opening any negotiations with the EU until at least next year. And of course, this is them trying to prove that, hey, we don't need Europe. That way, next year, they can do some sneaky stuff and, you know, maybe try and sneak back into some European uh, programmes or, you know, change laws while still maintaining all the presence that they, quote, got Brexit done. Like I've said before, us leaving the single market and the customs union is a disastrous move for this country and its economics, and, it, and especially, as we can see there, for its science, research, and technology development. So it is completely useless for, once again, to Boris to drone on about how he wants to, quote, level up the country, when we have seen nothing but, as Boris Johnson himself would, would put it, nothing but a pyramid of piffle.
And unless we actually start to see some concrete proposals of levelling up for this country, it ain't going to happen. And especially under this government, it ain't going to happen at all. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And, of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as one updated link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can always buy me a coffee. And, as always, thank you very much for all those people who do support me that way. And, of course, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.